I call it Raw Guy Garage, and this can be another episode on this 65 Mustang. See if we can turn this hack job around. So follow me along through the intro, and I'll be back. Alright guys, this is the next week, and I've been working on this car pretty heavy the past couple days. And as you can see, there's some more primer than there was in the last video. So I've done quite a bit of stuff. So let me flip the camera around and we'll talk about it a little bit. So I've been working along and I've got this rocker panel all roughed in. It looks pretty good. I went back and touched up a couple places on the doors in this quarter. And I've been working on this quarter panel. So I've got it good and roughed in up here. I've got her get pretty respectable up here. And once again, it don't look the greatest because of tire stripes and spray can primer. But that's only gonna be temporary until I can get some high build on it. But I went here this morning, hit it with a block a little bit, touched a couple of places, and it feels pretty straight, looks pretty straight. Got a couple little places like up here. He's trying to make a decision if he wants to put a vinyl top back on the car. And if so, places like that won't matter under the top. Uh, get a little while before he can make a full decision. I can body work his top and paint it and it look good. But today, we really need to work on this door. And there's a couple of little issues that need to address. I didn't show it in another video, but where I fixed this door gap. It still needs just a little bit of work up here, but it's pretty close. We got some little denny stuff here, and a little dent here, a little dent area there, and down there. So, and right there. So maybe I won't have to skim this whole door. I may just do it like the other one, skim the top, and skim the very bottom, and just go in there and fix these small places in between. So depending on what kind of progress we make today, we may either move on to the trunk lid and the filler panel in the back, or we may just go ahead and start stripping some of this stuff off and seeing what we got up here. But first off, we gotta get this door dressed. So far, I've been pretty happy with the lack of amount of filler I've had to actually leave in the car. Like I said before in the last video, it looks like I put a lot in, but I sent about 95% of that back out. In fact, this driver's side quarter was almost translucent across the whole panel. Uh, except up there at the top where I fixed the trunk lid gap. So, that's the goal. Minimal, minimal filler. So, I'm going to move on this door, see if I can get it roughed in. And if things go well, we'll probably move on to the trunk and the rear filler panel. If I can get them knocked out today, we need to start stripping the front end on this thing. So stick around with me. Let's we'll see what we get into. And all right, what you see me working on, there was that dent from the inside here. And what I done, I took a pointed body hammer and uh, started in kind of a circular motion and worked in towards the center. Uh, as you can see, I hit with a block here and we just have a very, very small low spot right there right now. So just take a nice little skim coat there. We should be, able to be good. Uh, some of these smaller sunk in little dents it will just get filled, mostly because they're not worth trying to pull out. And when I say not really worth trying to pull out, I mean they are super shallow. So a skim coat of filler will take care of those pretty easily. 
and stay under that mythical, you know, eighth inch thick mark. So, I think at this point I'm ready to skim this door, so let's get to it. So, we got the top of the door worked pretty well. I went ahead and sprayed some primer on it. Uh, ended up getting the door gap pretty decent here. It's not going to be great. It's a little tighter down here than it is up there. This is going to be a driver quality car. I can spend a bunch of time making all these gaps perfect. But there's a point where it's just got to be good enough. So, while I was waiting on that primer to kind of dry before I started sanding down there, I just started kind of picking around here on these fenders. And, you know, that paint ain't held on no better than other. Literally, I took all this off. It was a place right here and I just kind of went, and just kind of push this up in there all the way to the edge over here. So, pretty impressive, I guess. Still sure ain't held on there all good. High quality. And all right, I spent way more time on this door than I ever should have. I broke out my little long block. And I've been using a little short block, kind of blend some places in here. And a lot of you be saying, well, that big piece of raw metal right there is a high spot. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily. So what I've done here, I went ahead, these door gaps were driving me nutty, especially right here. The door was lower than the quarter, so I went in there, I worked that door edge out until it was flush, which means I had to put just a little more filler in here than I wanted to, but it's still very thin. So the reason why you see a lot of metal through my filler is because I want the least amount of filler in here. This should be good enough that when I high build primer, it should be able to block it out. So what I'm going to continue to do now, I finished blocking it with the 80 on both the long and the short blocks here to get my edges the way I want them. Now I'm going to knock it off with the 150. Then we'll spray some more of this Transstar aerosol primer, which is right there on this and the door should be good until we high build primer. Now most people just slabbed it full of filler, knocked it down, called it good. I want the minimal amount of filler that I can put in a car. There's not no car on the face of the earth that don't have some filler in it. Unless it's got hundreds of thousands of hours worth of metal work. When you're dealing with something like this car that's a budget, you're gonna have filler. And the easy fix for most places that do this kind of work is just to slab all of it in it. Once it's slick, call it good and send it on out the door. I like to make sure it's minimal. Well, at this point, it's the next day. So yesterday before I left, I started messing with the trunk lid a little bit, trying to get that dip down in the center of it where it didn't fit up with the rear filler panel at the rear window. So I ended up doing a few different things and I've got it pretty decent. So I'm gonna flip around and I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you what this trunk lid looks like after I knocked it off with a flat block. And this is gonna be a reason why I pretty much skim all these panels. 
and we got Daisy in the floor. But if you look at this trunk lid, you can see all the highs and lows where I run over it with a block. It's not real great shape at all. So I got our sides pretty good. I got our side gaps pretty decent there and here. <clears throat> I got our front gap pretty decent. So the problem before was it was mega low here in the center, especially right here. It had a ginormous, ginormous lip. So now we're pretty flush all the way around. Uh, keep in mind it's not latched. Because I've still got to put that latch panel in there. But we're ready to bodywork this trunk. So what I'm going to do, like I'd have on the rest of the car, I'm going to scuff this a little more. We're going to skim coat it. And then I'm going to work it down with air file. Then finish up with a hand block and 150 grit at the end. But the old trunk's pretty wavy. I offered him the one off the 66 out there, you know, I would kind of exchange the panels. He didn't seem real interested in it, so we'll fix these. So let me get busy. So I was working along on a trunk lid, and I figured I'd show you all a little trick. So let me flip around. Say you're in a situation like this where you skim the whole panel, it's all white, and you can't see all the spots that you may need to go in and add a little extra fill, like right here or right here where there was a couple little small pinholes. What you can do, you can guide coat your filler just like you do your primer, like this. All right, and just take and just mist it with a little contrasting color paint, just, just some cheap stuff, because it don't matter because we're gonna sand it off. And once you get that, that little, those little black dots will settle down into all your little small pinholes and bad spots. And it'll make those things, when you run over it with a flat block, <sighs> like that, it'll make them super obvious. Like right here, and right here. Where that stuff didn't stand out like that before. And it don't take a lot of sanding to start seeing some bad spots. So basically this was just my first light skim on this trunk. I just very lightly skimmed it to see how bad it really actually was. Obviously we got some high places. And those are going to have to be addressed. But I've done this that way I can knock it off. When I've done my second little skim here, I would be able to see everything. And we got Daisy running around. But I figured that was a good tip to kind of share. Uh, it's real easy when doing filler work, kind of get a white out situation where you can't see nothing until you spray something else on top of it. So that might save you a little time. And another helpful tip that'll help you, you can see these gaps between this high spot and this high spot, and you see the filler is not sanded right there. Same here to here, and from here to here. Got a pretty good little low spot. So what I'll do, I'll take a pointed body hammer like this, and we'll just work this metal high spot. And I'm not talking about beating the snot out of it. I'll just work in a circle around, okay? Now, I'm not actually doing this. I'm just showing you. I'll work around in there until I get down to a circle or I might start in the center and work my way out just depending on what the shape of the thing is but you can do that as you're working the filler down blocking it out and you should watch these spots start to disappear now keep in mind like I said this just initial light skim so there's not a whole lot of filler on here but like I said from the beginning I'm trying to minimize the amount that's in the car so just another helpful tip that might help you in your project but just work it down gently.
Now you can certainly beat the crap out of it and make a dent there. That's not what I'm trying to do. You want to work that metal down a little bit so you can work your filler on down. That way next time you skim it, there won't be an issue. And all right, I went ahead and reworked this again after going there with that small hammer and just working those high spots down a little more. And as you can see, I've worked most of it back out except for a little spot right here. And this trunk lid was very, very rough right here. And I spent a lot of time dollying on this edge trying to get this trunk straightened out. So as you can see, we're starting to see some of those little high spots pop back up that we'd seen before looking across the reflection. So at this point, it's ready for a skim coat again, another thin skim coat. And I'll work it down once again until we start seeing a little bit of metal like this. And I'm real big about using feel of how a panel feels. You can feel the highs and lows as you walk across it. So I'm going to work it down until the filler is almost translucent again, like here. That's the epoxy primer showing through. That's all these little spots are right there. They're not broke through metal. They're where epoxy primers kind of translucented back through. And I don't know why this camera is having a hard time focusing. But as you can see, I didn't skim coat the whole trunk. I just kind of skim coated what I needed. So it's ready for skim coat number two. And this time I will pull the whole trunk lid down and hopefully it'll be the last time I'll have to work it. And of course Daisy's decided to come hang out again, haven't you? Huh? So I got more than plenty enough work to do for one man for a long time. And unfortunately that puts me on backlog on my schedule here at the shop. So if you see me an email about doing work, Please understand that it will be a while before I could actually get your car in. So, let me get back to work. Well, I ran out of materials. That doesn't mean that I ran out of body filler. And primer. So, means I need to move on and work on something else on the car. So, let's get to that. So, the big elephant in the room is this fender right here, which is our pressure side fender. Now, we know it's got a dent here. We knew it had a chunk of Bondo up here. So let's dig this out here and see why. I went ahead and took the lower windshield trim off and the wipers off. Um, yeah, we're not gonna get into the mess that was involved in taking these two, three things off. Uh, way more hacked up riggy than what I would ever anticipate. So. Let's dig into this corner and see what we got. Well, that didn't take long to uncover. Uh, I guess some quite a bit of bondo right here. So, what I was curious of why this hole was there. So, let me continue digging here a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and just clean this whole section here off and see what we got. And all right, after just a few minutes with a little Harbor Freight, a little, uh, you know. I don't know what they call it, but it's real similar to the Eastwood Contour SCT. So, this is what we had on that blob bondo. Now, it does have some kind of boogery welds over here. But there is nothing on this side. And I don't really know what I was holding this in, but... You know, sometimes uh, don't look if you don't want to know the answer to the problem. But... We had some Bondo up here, feeling of it. It feels like there's a little high spot right here. 
and they had a big old blob in here trying to get rid of the high spot instead of working the metal down. But antenna hole looks like it was cut with a pair of crack teeth. Uh, and you know, there's obviously some Denny stuff all in here. But now I want to know what's under this. Under this piece of metal because that's not holding it in. And I really don't see no witnesses of it being welded on this side. And there's something holding it in. And I'm going to assume that they probably slapped Bondo over the bottom of it. Well, I couldn't have been more right about that one. Now, keep in mind, guys, I've not dug around on the front of this car a whole lot. Just just what we've seen. And I said from the get-go, this car would have been better off as a donor. And, you know, I've been right since the beginning. But let me show you. And, yeah. So, here we are at their door jam. And... Our holes right here, and you can see the bottom of it right here. Just raw bondo, just globbed over it. You know, I was gonna try to chip it off, but you know, it's pretty tight quarters in here. So, as much as I didn't want to take that fender off, I'm gonna have to. So. At least it'll make it stripping it easier. I'm gonna assume that they were attempting to, you know, do this right here where you can't put an antenna. Once again, only an assumption. I don't know why this would be here. This is not an OE fender. This is another Chinese one. And it was going to be fixed up here anyway. And when I seen that, I thought maybe they might have split this fender right here and moved it this way. Now, couldn't have been more wrong there. So to be honest, I knew there was going to be more surprises. As bad as this car was from the get-go, there was no way there wasn't going to be. So hopefully my supplies will get here soon and I can finish up this trunk lid. But it looks like we're definitely going to have to take fenders off and all that stuff and dig even deeper. All right, and it's a little while later. I got some new product here. Uh, a couple of these little spots were just sprayer marks where I sprayed. It's coming along pretty well. The product we're using now is 3M Platinum Plus. That right there is part number. Supposed to be good paint in 45 minutes. And I can tell you one thing I do know for sure. I skim coated this trunk a while ago and then decided I was going to go eat some lunch and then I come back and knock it down. This stuff's harder than a rock. Even working it with 40 grit, it took forever to get this cut down to this level. So, got the trunk lid almost roughed in, guys. So, a few more minutes after this stuff. Get to the point being able to sand it, and we should be good on the trunk. So the big thing is, I try to catch that filler in the point where it's not fully cured, and I can knock it down pretty easy with coarse grit paper. Then as it dries out, I'll go to a finer stuff and kind of work it with my hands sometimes with a hand block. I'm not gonna do three inch stuff that way because it gets rock hard. Well, guys, I got the trunk lid and the Transtar primer. I'll flip around and I'll show that to you here in a minute, but it's been a rough few days so far. I've been working on this thing for three days. I've got most of the body work roughed in on the body. Got both the doors, both quarter panels, trunk lid, and the trunk jam roughed in. Uh, probably got at least three or four more days worth of roughing in body work and stripping the paint off this front end to see what we got 100% under air. But hopefully, for our next video, I'll make a little headway and we'll get at least most paint off front fenders and we'll see what's under there. So stay tuned for that one. But until then, let me flip this camera around. 
All right, guys, I went back in and I fixed a couple of places I wasn't happy with around the rear window. Went in here and cleaned up some of our gaps. Our trunk gap looks pretty darn decent now it's in primer. Pretty happy with the trunk lid in itself as it goes. Got this trunk gap straightened out. I still got to do this rocker panel down here. This one should go a lot quicker than the other side because there's not no major big dents in it. It's just where I weld the trim holes. But like you've seen in the short, if you've seen it, I peek around on the paint here, dug around over there. So after I get that rocker panel addressed, it's time to either move on to this roof, which I'm still waiting to hear from him on what he decides he wants to do. Because if he wants to put a vinyl top up here, all I need to address is this corner where we fixed it and the lead seam on the other side and the roof should be okay to put a top on but I really need to start digging into these fenders as you can see the GT289 junk is off 289M up here is off which they weren't in the right places so all them holes would have to be welded up I still need to take the headlight bezels, the grill out of it the hood emblems, the bumper you know this Fake hood scoop to nowhere needs to come off, and he needs to decide if he wants to keep that. And then I can start kind of digging around on this fender. I did go in there a little earlier and start looking for Bondo in some various places after seeing this mess. But the car's starting to come around a little bit, so so that's where I'm going to leave this video off, guys. Uh, it's been a rough couple days. Tomorrow is the 4th of July. So I may take that off from shop. I don't remember my mind up yet. So, that said, if you like these kind of videos, please hit that like button on this video. Comment down below because it helps YouTube pick these videos up on their algorithm. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button because it does help the channel grow and help me bring you more videos like this. If you are a subscriber, I greatly appreciate you guys. So, until the next video on this horrible hack job with the 65 Mustang, I think we're starting to finally turn this ship around a little bit. See you at the next video. Thanks for watching.